I'm Tyler Voorhees. I'm just going to give you a quick tutorial on how to do a valley tool table rail, how to cover it with some cloth. Um, these happen to be ridgebacks. Um, the ridgebacks are a little bit bigger around, so I would recommend cutting the cloth a little bit wider. Usually it's a six inch strip. Um, I went ahead and did six and a half inch just to make sure that I had enough to go, and it's still a little bit tight. Um, but all right, here's what I'm going to show you. I'm actually going to do one of the side rails that has a side pocket. Um, and that'll kind of give you a better idea on how to actually do this. First of all, make sure you know which one is the top of the cloth versus the bottom of the cloth. Um, my camera's probably not good enough to actually determine that, so kind of look for the tighter weave um, is usually what it is, or the shinier side. All right, then from there, I'm gonna start at one of the corner pockets. So that's the one with the 45 degree versus closer to 90 degree. And what I do is put the cloth over, make sure that you have the top of the cloth on the outside, um, the bottom of the cloth kind of against the rail. And then what I do, you can come in a little closer on the video, um, I just kind of fold it over about an inch. I'm going to put like two staples here to hold that. Then I flip it around to the other end. And this is one of the tricks I found for valley rails that makes it a lot easier because you don't need like three hands to do it. But I'm going to go ahead and pull this relatively tight. I don't want to go too tight because I might run the risk of tearing it. I've done that before. But I'm going to pull it pretty nice and snug. But then what I tend to do is, this is the top of the rail. If anything, I want to go just ever so slightly this way with my pull. And that helps pull a little bit more of this cloth out. And then I'm going to put two staples here. And then at this point, I don't have to sit there and be pulling end to end the whole time. That makes it a lot easier. The next part I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on this corner by the side pocket because that's where I want to get, the, that's probably the trickiest part. So what I'm going to do is pull kind of over here on the top. I'm going to pull it out so if you're looking, right here there's no fold. I'm going to put a staple in and then I'm going to work my way this way. And with the next pull, I can pull back a little bit towards the end of the rail. But I don't want to get a pucker up here. So I get as much as I can, put another little staple in there, and I probably have to do that about one more time. And at that point you're gonna see there's pretty much no folds up here and there's no folds on the face of the pocket. And then at this point I don't have to pull quite so much. I could pull a little bit from the bottom um, I don't want to pull too far because I'm going to run up short on the bottom. But at this point I can just kind of staple about every inch going across the top. And just make sure that this is even. I get to about halfway and then I'm going to go work on the corner pocket. Once again I'm doing on the top of the rail first. But you can see how much easier this is because I don't have as much to pull out. This cloth I'm actually using is Mercury Ultra, and that's a little bit important to know because if you're using something like eight, Simonis 860, 860 is all wool and doesn't stretch very much. Mercury Ultra and the Championship and Simonis 860HR have wool or have nylon in them and are stretchy. So this technique that I'm showing you with the corners and stretching it to cover all that. It can only be done with cloth with wool in it because it stretches and has some give. But at this point, if you look at the top of the rail, I mean, yeah, this is a little loose, but if I kind of pull down just a little bit, you're gonna see that there's no fold anywhere, even going onto the side, the ends of the rail. Now I can flip around to work in the bottom. So once again, I'll go back to the side pocket and pull up, and at this point, I'm not so worried if I end up with a little pucker here. I mean, I'm going to try not to do that, but a little pucker is okay. Because that can be covered totally under the rail. But I'm going to do the same basic thing. I'm pulling this way and up. Try to pull as much of that out as I can. That staple didn't go all the way in. So get that staple out of there. Now I'm going to do the same thing I did before on the top, where I'm going to kind of pull up and over just a little bit, try to keep as much of the, keep it from puckering. And then 
once I get past the end, I can pretty much just go straight up. At this point, I am pulling them tight. So I got to be a little careful because I'm resting on the table that I don't stop myself from pulling the loose part from the top when I'm pulling up. I'll go to about the halfway part on the rail again. And this technique, because I pulled the lengthwise to start with, I'm not worrying to have to pull kind of sideways or anything like that. I could pull just straight up. So I'll come back to this other end. Once again, I'll kind of pull this way. Try to pull all that fold out so you see there's no wrinkles anywhere. Got my hands in the wrong place. that one all the way in. Then if I do end up with a little fold like that, it's okay because that'll be hidden under the rail. You'll never see it. But once again, I'm going to try to get rid of it. And this is where I get a little bit short because I pulled like too much up here. If I have to, I can put a staple on the bottom, but I think I can get away without it. Alright, now to finish the rail, what I'm going to do is go to these corners and do the same thing on all four of them. What I do is kind of like pull it out like this and then kind of push it flat. So it's actually kind of a triangular fold, but it's folded with a little triangle on this side, a little triangle on this side, and I can pull it nice and flat. Put a staple in. If I do happen to hit one of the other staples, I'm probably going to bend my staple. Just pull it out and do a new one. If I do have a little spot like this, I can just pull that out too. Put a staple to hold it down. And then I'll just trim right around the edge and trim off all this excess. But when you look at the front of it, you see there's no fold anywhere that will be visible on either end. We'll get a nice tight rail cover.